What's going on? It's the outline with Kevin Dwayne. Thank you so much for joining me for another week. I believe this this is episode 13. I have showed up for 13 weeks in a row. There hasn't been a a blank week at all. I have not skipped a week. I hope you guys are proud that you are getting consistent content. I am happy I'm giving consistent content because it's definitely a commitment. I mean, I, I'm a weekend warrior. I show, you know, I work during the week. I'm also a photographer. So for me to still show up and record this means a lot. Um, someone in Periscope, which you can also join on Tuesday nights, just said they love a man that's consistent. And I'm glad to be a consistent man. And I love a man that's consistent, too. So we have that in common. But remember, you can listen to this podcast on Stitcher iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play Music. You can also go to my website, kevindwayne.com. On Tuesday nights, you can join the the behind-the-scenes recording um, at 7.30 Eastern for now. Um, You can go on Periscope or Facebook Live, and you can see me recording the podcast. You can join the crazy-ass conversation that is happening on Periscope and Facebook. You can also ask questions and just simply interact. So before I begin, I want to give a couple shout outs to some other cool podcasts that I'm listening to and some people who have shown me love over the last 13 weeks. Uh, Number one is the Single and Black podcast. Great podcast. Super funny. I love the girl who runs it. She's super cool. So make sure you guys check that out. Also, check out the Talk It Out podcast. Another great show. The John Effect podcast. That guy... I don't know how he does it. He records so many shows, but he also listens to so many podcasts and comments throughout all of them. And I'm like, how do you even have the time? I'm like, I can listen to podcasts, but I can't sit there and comment. So I truly appreciate John. Listen to the John Effect podcast. He's hilarious. The podcast brothers, they give you a pretty um, funny perspective of a lot of things that happen. Um, the Wind Down Podcast. And my newest friend is uh, the Critical Dump Podcast. Make sure you guys check that out. These are people who have really interacted over the last few weeks, and I truly appreciate it because it's always important to network with people no matter what what, what kind of genre you're in. And so it's great to find other people who you can align with and work with and collab with, and it's super important. Also, I wanted to give another um, kind of... Um, Head over to Ready Set Great. Ready Set Great is this great fitness group out here, uh, ran by this cool, super energetic, almost crazy guy named Dwayne. I don't think he's in the the podcast right now, but he'll probably be in here later. But he um, has this group. They have different fitness challenges. It's group is group or it can be private. So every first and third Saturday we hike up Stone Mountain. So this Saturday at 8 a.m. sharp, do not be late. Come hike with us. I'll be there. Uh, We're going to actually meet up at like 7 a.m. and do a run before because we want to be extra. But as soon as 8 hits, we're going to hike up the mountain and there'll be a brief workout at the top and then we'll come right back down. That's going to be at Stone Mountain this weekend, Saturday morning, 8 a.m. sharp. If you're late, you will be late. Period. You will be. You just. It just is what it is. You. You'll be left. We're gonna go up. I mean, the if the mountain will still be there for you. We just won't be there to walk it with you. But 8 a.m. sharp at Stone Mountain this Saturday, and it's every first and third. It's a group event. The more, the merrier. Uh, he also has other events on during the week. So just check out ReadySetGreat.com, and you can see all the other things that are happening. Um, I also I want to notice a couple comments that are happening on Facebook Live. Uh, so people saying hello, hello everyone. Hey, hello to my niece Casey who says hello. Love you guys. Hey you guys. Um, thank you guys for joining both sides of it. And let's talk about something else. My teeth. Um, can we talk about my teeth really quick? Because I went to the dentist this morning, and I'm trying to understand like. Why is it so expensive to keep something that I was born with? Like, I don't understand it at all. So last year I got some work done and um, I was lucky. I was lucky enough to set up a payment plan because you guys know the stuff is so expensive. It's so damn expensive. And for me, I've never had braces. I've never had veneers. I've never had anything like that. My teeth are straight and that's great. But by the bill that I have, you would think I got 
just dentures or something. But um, I had some work done last year, did a payment plan. And so I asked for my ledger today just so I can keep track of, you know, when I'm going to pay this shit off. And apparently it's never going to happen ever, like ever. It's never going to happen. So in the last year, I have paid $3,000 out of pocket. That's not including my insurance just to, you know, keep my smile and I still have like another 3,000 to go like I'm this crazy and this is all from you know the behind the scenes stuff you know this is like you know cavities and I had a root canal and you know just maintenance and all that kind of stuff I've had like everything done and just literally yeah it's crazy it's absolutely crazy and uh this smile this is why I smile so much this is why I don't mean mugging pictures you're gonna see this shit and I've never had braces but I had to get so much done and it it comes from I guess being a child and you know not taking proper care of my teeth and not knowing how to take proper care of my teeth and it comes to get you it totally comes to get you and so um yeah um you know the truth of the matter is I even if I change insurance it's still gonna cost a lot someone in the um periscope says I should change insurance I have pretty good insurance the problem is I have some fucked up teeth behind the scenes so the outside you see this beautiful bright smile but you know I had a lot going on under the hood period like you know so I had to get it fixed so now I'm much better everything is good everything is you know moving fine but it's it's super crazy like just I've paid so much money in dental work that I'm like, so if you have kids right now, please tell them to go floss their teeth, go under the gum line and handle things. Uh, To the person who said that I may be getting robbed, I may be getting robbed, but I also have to say I, I was in a bad condition. Like, I was in really bad condition. Like, I hadn't been going. Like, like I should have been going. I didn't go until I was an adult. So a lot of that is on me, too. Because I had a lot of work to get done. And I'm glad I did. It removed the anxiety and things like that. But Jesus, like, I was just looking at all the money I paid out of pocket and was like, wow, like, I really, I really did this. Like, my God. I mean, I'm happy that I'm I'm more out of it than in it. And, um, you know, there's no pain and my teeth look great and stuff like that. But shit, like, it's crazy that we're born with with these bodies and these parts And then as you get older, like, you have to pay someone to help you maintain them. That's the craziest thing to me. Like, it's just the, and, ugh, everything's so expensive. Like, adulting is just super crazy. Like, super, super crazy. You know, know, you're going to, you have to pay to maintain, period. And it's it's frustrating because you're like, Anything else you'll haggle, you be like, I'll go without this. I'll go with I'll go without this, you know. But when it comes to your health, you can't go without things. You need your medicines, you need certain things. And that's why it's important to take care of yourself while you still can, you know, eating vegetables and flossing and brushing your teeth and watching what you eat and doing that stuff because it's only gonna get pricier. And it's 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 just like going to a damn mechanic. I, every time I go to the dentist, I feel like they're gonna find something. It's just like, oh, well, you know, back here. It's just, oh, it, it's so nerve wracking. But ah, uh, it's 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 so nerve wracking. But I am grateful for being able to do this. Someone in the Facebook group said that they had two inlays and it was three thousand dollars. See, so I'm not the only one out here. I'm glad somebody else has felt this like it's so expensive it's really really expensive and then you know when I have like my physicals and stuff and they you know they they test certain things out and when you when you get over 30 then they're like looking for different things I'm like listen I don't need no bad news I'm not trying to have no more bills like um listen um as far as the inlay um I didn't get a chance to pre-google that before someone said it but I will give you time to go to google and find out I uh do you want to explain to someone in a periscope what an inlay is um yes someone also said that flossing is hella important it's super important everything everything that i was told while i was getting like my root canals and getting like things filled everyone was like you need to floss you need to floss like it's that two dollar case of floss will save you thousands of dollars let me tell you it's so important do it after every meal if you can it will save you just take the time go through every tooth go under the gum line get the bacteria out it will save you so much money and it's important to teach your children how to do it properly i know growing up 
Like my mom, she would always be like, oh, go brush your teeth and floss. But I cannot tell you one time that she was actually there in there with me showing me how to get under the gum line. I was just in there just winking it, just putting the floss in my mouth and saying, hey, I did it. But no one actually showed me how to get in there. It wasn't until I went to a dentist and they were like, this is what you do. And I'm like, shit, who would have thought, you know? And it's more than just going in and just really quick. You have to go under the gum line and get the food out because you don't want it to open up and have those spaces and things like that. So floss, go floss, uh, get get an actual... Uh, power tube brushes are great. They I recommend Sonic Care because it stimulates the gums. But these these simple measures can save you a lot of money down the line. Like real talk. Because listen, I, I told you guys how much I've spent. Um, you do have to be careful not to hurt your gums. That is true. Be very gentle. But at the same time, floss. Don't skip it. Floss. Period. You know. Um, now. Someone answered the question as far as the inlay. The inlay, thank you, Ernesto. An inlay is a partial porcelain placed into the tooth. And they had two of them, and it cost $3,000. So, like we said, brush your funky-ass teeth and floss them nasty-ass gums. It will save you so much money. And that's just that. I'm glad you guys are interacting with me. Thank you so much. It's important. Learn from us. Learn from us. Like... On teeth, just teeth. We haven't even got to Sally Mae. I owe her so much money. Love, can we? Oh, I'm still trying to figure out the interest with Sally Mae because when I was in college, I promise you, I only borrowed a cool fifteen thou, if that. How that shit got to forty, I don't know. I don't know. But at this point, it's till death do us part because at my salary right now. She ain't going to see that money. And I understand, you know, she wanted to change her name to Navient, but that's still that bitch Sally. She ne- she's never going to see that money. I can't do it. I, you know, there was a promissory note, but guess what? I didn't get the job that I was promised when I signed that note. So I, I, I don't even know. I don't know what to say about that. So I got to be able to pay her her minimums. I got to pay rent. I got to pay car. I got to pay off my teeth. It, it's it's a lot. It's 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 a lot. Um, let's see here. Uh, someone in uh, Facebook said that they're back in school just to get this extra money from Sally Mae because <laughs> she ain't gonna get it back. Listen, I thought about it. I thought about going back to school, but I just can't add to that debt. I just can't. And I know that some people are like professional students, like they go to school. They go to school forever, like kind of like laying on uh, girlfriends. And I'm here for that, too. You just keep pulling and pulling and pulling. And hopefully, you know, either you'll die or get a job where you can actually pay it off. But it's crazy. Like, it's worse than credit cards. It's it's worse than credit cards. Like, you can't get rid of it. You can't go bankrupt. You can't do anything. It's always going to be with you. They say, oh, here we are again. You have to pay it. And the interest just goes up and up and up and I don't even want to talk about it. I'm getting depressed. I'm getting depressed just thinking about it. But no one can stand her. She's a a hateful, ugly person. Her name is Sally Mae. I mean, she's obviously from the country, but she has a mean hustle. But some of you guys know her as Navient now. That's how I know her. But I know Sally's in there. She's still in my credit report. So moving on from, you know, the depressions of life or to another depression, if you have not watched it yet, Please go to Netflix after this podcast and watch 13th. It is a documentary by Ava DuVernay and it is absolutely amazing. It's not an easy watch by any means. 13th, it's called 13th, and it's about the 13th Amendment. It's not an easy watch at all, but it's very good. It will open your mind to a lot of things that are happening and it pretty much talks about how the 13th Amendment was literally created to keep us as slaves. It pretty much says that no man can own a slave unless he's a criminal, because then he becomes a slave of the state. And it talks about how the police force happened right after slavery, through Jim Crow, and how how black people were demonized, and how pretty much that's why mass incarceration is so huge now. Because they're literally slaves of today. And it breaks it down all the way from slavery to present. And it will blow your mind. It is amazing. Uh, it, it has to be recommended viewing. Um, my gripe with Netflix, it came out on Friday. And 
if Ava didn't promote it, I wouldn't have known about it. I had to go, I had to search for it. And you know how new releases work on Netflix. They're right on that first page. It was not on that first page. I had to search for it. Now, because so many people have watched it, it's on the trending page now. So if you go on Netflix, it'll be in your trending section, at least on, you know, like on the Roku and the Apple TV. I have both of those and it's on the trending, but it wasn't in the new releases, but it is super, super, super good. Um, please watch it. It it will open your eyes to a lot of things and it, it makes total sense. It makes total sense. Um, but yeah, it's called 13th. Watch it. Like I said, it's not an easy watch. Don't get mad at me. If you get upset because you're going to want to fight somebody, you may want to burn some stuff down. But, you know, don't get a record because you'll see what records do to you. But please watch it. It's 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 a great documentary. It's not that long either, but it's a very powerful watch. So I highly, highly recommend it. Um I wanted to uh, touch on, so today is um, National Coming Out Day. Last week, I told you guys that there is literally a national day every day for something. And I feel like some of them are being made made up. This one I know to be true because it's been going on for years and I've, I've celebrated it or at least honored it you know, every year because I came out when I was 19. So it's been 11 years now. Um, uh, two things. One... The negative part of it. Um, so Beanie Siegel, if you guys remember who he is, he is he used to be a part of Jay Z's camp back in the day. He was in state property. Um, he had an interview today with Breakfast Club, and of course Charlemagne, as he does, he loves to troll people. He trolls people all the time, and that's what he does. I mean, he comes from Wendy Williams' camp. Now, Beanie Siegel. He talked about how, you know, like he gay people disgust him or sickening him. And he 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 hates having to think about how to tell his son while two guys are kissing on the TV. Blah, 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 blah. Am I shocked by this? Hell no. I listen to Tax Season, which is another podcast that you should check out. It's super funny. He's crazy as hell. But Beanie Siegel has been on there twice. And the interviews that he had were very interesting. But I peeped game. The way he talks, number one, I believe he's Muslim. I believe. You can correct me if I'm wrong. But I peeped game on that. He, um, the way he talks, he talks down upon women. The way, He speaks as if women aren't even human. So I peeped that. And then I, I also peeped that he has issues of masculinity. He, he, he's commonly talking about what men should and shoot and should not do. And I was like, okay, this is problematic. And I was like, okay, he's probably a homophobe. I can just sense it. So I was not shocked by his statement at all. But what drives me crazy about this is, Beanie, you've been to prison, dude, for drugs, for weapons, for everything. But you have an issue. So you don't have an issue explaining that to your son, you know, why you've been to prison and why people go to prison. But somehow you have an issue explaining to your son why why some women like women and why some men like men. How about you just say people are different? And that's all you have to say. That's it. There's nothing else to say. Some people are different. That's it. It's not a matter of, oh, I have to explain this. It's nothing to explain. Some people are different. You may like women when you grow up. You may like men. I happen to like women, and that's how I got you. But there are some men who like men, and there are some women who like women. And that's just it. It doesn't have to be this whole, well, why do I have to explain this to my kid? You don't. You don't have to explain anything. You just have to be forthcoming. Some people are just different in that way. And you can love who you want to love. But instead, you want to put fear in, in your son. So if he is gay, he'll never tell you. And men who think like that, I think, are very selfish because they're so concerned about their discomfort of having a gay child or having gay people around them that they don't think about the pain they're putting on the person that may be gay. It's silly. It's stupid as fuck. But never mind. But never mind that. I want to know how did you explain your criminal history? How did you explain Meek Mill's people knocking you the fuck out a couple months ago? How did you explain that? So instead of sitting here and using your platform to further stretch homophobia, how about you use it to do just do better? Just do better. And that's all I have to say about that. Um, for I also I know for coming out day a lot of people like to talk about how they came out. 
I beat that thing into the ground. Um, if you want to know about my coming out story, there is a post on my website, kevindwayne.com. I wrote it last year. And uh, you can find out what that was like. You can also um, go to my YouTube. There's two videos that talk about, you know, my processes and how I came out. And that, I'm going to leave it at that. But what I do want to talk about, what I think is pretty funny and I thought about is my first time going to a gay club. And that means my first time going to a club, period. Because I think this is what movies are made of. Because, you know, you have things happen to you think only me. Only this could happen to me. So my first time going to a club. I was fresh out of high school. It was July. It was, a, honestly, it was a few days after Independence Day. I know because I was at a friend's timeshare in Palm Springs. I had just got a brand new car. Well, not a brand new car. I just got a new car for me, a car, a used car, but it was new to me. And um, I remember I couldn't wait to go home. And so I went home and uh, one of my friends, his name was Ryan, and he was like, hey, do you want to go out tonight? And I was like, wait, what, to like to a club? Like, yeah. He's like, oh, I know this, this club on Wednesday nights, blah, blah, blah. So I was so hyped to go. Um, I was still living at home at the time, and I actually wasn't out yet. I didn't come out until a few months later, so I wasn't out yet. So, you know, being in the house and just being freshly out of high school, I my mom was still very strict, like still very like, oh, you're not coming in my house all times of night. You know, you're, you're not going to come and go as you please. Like you start to follow my rules. And, you know, I had to kind of, you know, push back on that, you know, to my my own demise. But that it is what it was what it was. So this one Wednesday night, I told her, like, OK, I'm going to go out tonight. I'm probably going to come in late. She's like, um, it better not be after midnight. And I'm like, but it's a, it's a I'm going to a club like I'm going to get home like after midnight. She's like, no, you're going to be home before midnight. I'm like, but it's a club. People don't get there. She's like, but you go come in my house before midnight. So I'm like, <laughs> like I'm like, what the hell? So um I go out, we go out. So the whole excitement was there, just getting the outfit and just having this whole mental idea of what it would be like. And just, it was a whole moment. If you're from LA and I know some of you go, some, some of you guys are from LA. I went to a place called the arena or the full name is the arena cafe. Um, if they had Wednesday night, I forgot the name of it. I think it was, it was like called like, was it delicious Wednesdays? It was something just silly, but every Wednesday was the popping night to go. So we go to this club, we get there about, we get there like 10 45 and I'm already thinking to myself, I'm not going to make it back home at 12. I'm just going to be defiant tonight, but it won't be by much. Um, so <laughs> I'm going to make it. So we, so we get there. Um, I remember it being like $7 to get in and I'm like super, 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 super excited to be here. Like I'm like, I walk in and at this time I'm 18. So the gay, like the gay scene was still new to me. I only had my friend Ryan and I, I hadn't, I hadn't met anybody like this was so new to me and it's so to me in my world it was like there's not that many gay people so getting to this club where they're playing like my favorite songs of the time which i think were like sierra goodies and it was like nina sky move your body um and then before pussycat dolls got don't you it was sung by another person named tori alamaze do your do your research on that she actually had the song don't you before pussycat dolls they just made it popular so i remember walking in and just being like oh my god look at all of these men aka look at all this dick everywhere and they're all gay like oh my god it blew my mind it blew my mind it was crazy so i'm in this whole new world like somebody said in periscope and i'm just like oh my god this place is amazing like they play music i can dance freely with other guys i can do all of this stuff it was just it was crazy so as you know time got away from me and my friend Midnight came really, really quickly, okay? But at this time, I'm like, fuck it. It is what it is. I noticed at, like, 11, my mom was blowing my phone up. 
Like, she is back to back to back to back. Like, worse than Sally Mae. Back to back. She's blowing my phone up like, all right, it's 11. You need to be coming in here soon. Blowing my phone up. So, whatever. I'm like, I'm so, I'm going to make it home at a reasonable hour. It'll probably be 12.15. It'll probably be 12.30. Nothing later than that. No problem. So, we're dancing, dancing, dancing. And so, you guys know how this works. I end up meeting a guy. And that, uh So, his name was Ezekiel. He was a like he was a Latin dude. I do remember that. And so, at the time, I was still very, uh, I guess, new and somewhat insecure. So the fact that I had this guy like coming on to me, I'm like, what the fuck? Like it was just weird to me. I'm like, who me? Like who is this? Who? Who the hell? Like it was like you're talking. Like he's like you. I'm talking to you. You're cute. I'm like, oh, okay the hell and so uh you know so we're so we're chatting and i'm like wow this guy's really cute and he's talking to me and i'm just like getting like super super excited so we're just chatting and you know we're talking so time is moving on you know it's now getting it's it's now midnight my phone is still going off like off like ringing 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 like my mom is blowing my fucking phone up and i'm like whatever there's a guy he has a penis and he likes me and he's cute. She'll be all right. So I'm sitting right here and I'm just talking to him. I'm like, I'm 18. I'm 18. And so, so we're just chatting or whatever. Now, by me being young, I have to let you know that I was also stupid as fuck. I was very dumb. And I look back on past decisions and be like, oh my gosh, Kevin, you were so stupid. So Ezekiel, who I did eventually date, and that's a whole nother story. Ezekiel needed a ride home that night. And guess whose dumb ass took him home? Me. So he so I tell my friends, so I was like, cool, I'll give you a ride home. But of course, I didn't think to ask, like, you know, where the fuck he lived. <laughs> I didn't think to ask where he lived. Oh my God. So if you live in L if you're in LA, I lived I lived near Gardena. Ezekiel lived in Pasadena. If you're in L.A., you're cringing right now. But, so, the club was in Hollywood. West Hollywood, actually. So, I would have to go about 15 minutes north and then drive, like, another, I guess, 35 minutes south just to get back home. But I also had to take my friend home, too, which he lived, like, in Ladera. So... Now it's about 1 a.m. So we're walking out the club and my mom has left like eight voicemails. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to listen to one of them. Well, between the motherfucker, who the fuck you think? Am I? I heard that she was upset. That I heard she was upset. And that was just voicemail one. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and turn off my phone completely because, yeah, that wasn't a good idea either. And, you know, in hindsight, you know, you know, so I'm like, I'm going to turn my phone off. So I tell my friend Ryan, I'm like, okay, so we, we got to go because it's like one now and we got to take, I'm going to take this guy home. He's like, really? Okay, cool. So things are cool at this point he gets in the car we're in the car it was cool it was lovey-dovey you know he like holds my hand in the car it was just a moment you know it was a moment he was cute and he showed interest in me it was a fucking moment so we're like holding hands in the car and you know and i think <laughs> i remember playing teacher moses and it was Teacher Moses' Complex Simplicity because that album just came out. And then also Ashley Simpson, Pieces of Me because that, that was like hot at the time. But anyway, those songs are playing. I remember this night very clearly. So I take him home with no problem. Everything's cool. At this time, I'm not thinking about my mom because I turn my phone on, like, whatever. She's going to be mad. So it's like 1.45 about now. So... We get on the freeway. We're headed home. Um, this is before GPS. I still had like a Kyo Sarah phone with like a blue screen. Um, I ended up getting off at the wrong exit and getting completely lost. And my friend didn't know where we were either. So now I'm panicking. So I decided to turn my phone back on for some fucking reason. 
I have like 35 voicemails and my mom is cussing me all the way out. Okay, so I'm freaking out. So I end up I end up panicking and I think we're like we got back on the freeway and it took me the wrong way. So I panic and get off at the exit. The exit is a roundabout. I hit the side of the fucking roundabout and tear up the axle on my new used car. So now it's about 2.15 and my car is making this very loud sound. I'm losing all of my mind. I'm like, okay. This ain't working out too well. I don't know what I'm going to do. Okay. So, looking back on this, I also made another bad decision, but it worked out. I see a cop. I say, fuck it. I ask him, and I'm like, hey, how do I get back to the 110? He told me no problem. But looking back, I probably wouldn't do that now. But back then, it worked out. He told me how to get back to the freeway. We got back to the freeway. I drove on that fucked up ass axle all the way home. So I took my friend Ryan home. We drove slowly. So I got back to him. It was like three something. When I finally got home, it was like 427 a.m. So I sat outside for a good 10 minutes to try to get my mind right. I can look in the front yard. My mother has every light on in the fucking house, including my bedroom. She has a light on in every room, the kitchen, the living room, the hallway, my room. I'm like, oh my God. So, <laughs> so I was like, all right, I'm about to die because, well, you know, my axe was fucked up on my car. Um, and I didn't come home before midnight. Um, yeah, I'm about to die. I'm just going to die. I'm just going to die. So let me, let me just think about Ezekiel and, you know, that kiss and the holding the hand. He kissed me too and holding the hand. And, you know, I'll think about that. I'm never going to see him again because I'm going to die tonight. This morning, I'm going to die. So, um, I, uh, (laughs) shit. So I walk in the house and it's quiet, but every light is on. So it's loud. You know, because it's four in the morning and, you know, when the energy is different, you're like, "Uh, uh-uh, I'm going to I'm going to die. So she's not in the living room. She's not in the den. Like and my parents bedroom where it was in the back of the house, the very back of the house. And I'm like, let me just go back here and just deal with this. So all I do is walk. I just walk. (laughs) I just walk. And I can hear all of my footsteps. <laughs> and I just go to the, the edge of her room. And her and my dad were up. And she didn't even look at me. She looked out. <laughs> she out. Like, she was sitting. <laughs> she just looked out. She's just looking like I'm not even. And my dad, who doesn't speak that much, was just like, so is this what you're teaching us about trusting you? because this is un- unacceptable. And so the thing about my dad, he didn't speak much. So when he did, it affected me. I'm like, damn, like, you know, like most of the time he let things be between me and my mom. But that night he was like, I mean, you, you, um, you know, like, is this what you're teaching us? And I was like, yeah, I know it got out of hand. Da, 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 da. And he's just like, he's like, listen, he's like, I, he's like, all I know is this. He's like, I don't care about all that, but there's rules in this house. Just make sure you, you just honor them. I don't care about the details, but if we give you a time, that's the time. And that's that. So, um, my mom, she just loses it. And she just starts going off. She's like, you know, she, I don't even remember what she said, but she, she goes off. Like she's just going off. Um, and then somehow in the midst of me, like lightweight crying, cause I'm like overwhelmed. I tell them that, yeah. And I kind of fucked up my axle on my car, 
when I tell you that woman cussed me out for 24 hours, I kid you not. I remember going to sleep for like an hour and a half, waking up to her going plumb off on me, just cussing, going off, 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 off. She leaves, goes and runs errands, takes a peek at my car, comes back in and says, where's this motherfucker at? And another motherfucking thing. You were, and she cussed me out for 24 hours, nonstop. It was the craziest thing. Like I was talking to my friend on the phone and he was like, is she real? I said, she's been going off for 24 hours. And here's the gag. And it was funny because, you know, me feeling myself. I'm like, why are y'all even mad? Like, first of all, the car I bought, which I did, I bought my car. And I was feeling myself my little $6.75 an hour that I was making at Anchor Blue. (laughs) Oh, my God. I was like, I'm going to get it fixed. And I did get it fixed. And she was like, well, what you don't understand is you still live in my motherfucking house. So I don't give a damn if you don't get it fixed because I ain't paying for the shit. But you still, I was like, okay, bad move. I shouldn't have said that. But. It was, uh, so that was my first experience, um, going out to a gay club. Um, it was fun. Um, I don't know that it was worth, um, all that happened. Um, Ezekiel certainly wasn't worth it. As you know, he's not around now. Um, let me tell you what happened with Ezekiel. Um, we talked for like a cool month until we finally like had sex and then, deuces and it wasn't on my end it was on his end and then as time went by you know he saw my value and was like oh I messed up and I'm like no fuck you because by that time I figured out that I was that nigga and I was like actually I'm pulling people every week so I'm good but thank you this thank you it was great but that's what happened with him but it was a fun moment but that was my first time going out um yeah so yeah, so I'm glad to share that with you on National Coming Out Day. Um, yeah, that's that. So let's move on to other things that are happening. Um, Dr. Dre is threatening to sue Sony over this Michelet movie that's coming out. Um, what I don't understand about these things is, okay, so... Michelle, you know, she talks about being abused by him and, you know, and Suge and stuff like that. Now, granted, she never called the police and the police were never involved on those cases, but he does have other records of beating women like D Barnes and, and stuff like that. And um, the problem is this. I feel like they all want to revise history, but you had a complete movie straight out of Compton where you ignored completely ignored your marriage to Michelle. You completely ignored beating D Barnes like to oblivion, oblivion. You would completely ignored it. So when someone tries to tell their story, how do you then get mad? They're telling their story now. Yes, it puts you in a bad light, but it's what you did. And I know if I got my ass beat And if my kids by you were ignored and my entire existence was ignored, I'd want to tell my part too, especially since you put this whole beautiful story up. You put this whole fabricated thing up about how you were just this great genius. We know people have problems. We know people are complex. We know... We, we like we we know that you know that, that this is that this stuff happens but don't try to ignore it but why and someone said why not sue michelle why sue sony let me and that's it because you know you know what you did to her you'd sue her if you didn't have any guilt but instead you go to the third party it's a lot like Birdman when he went to breakfast club to check them to put some respect on his name when in reality he should have went to trick daddy or whoever else was talking about him no you go to the third party because you feel like oh you're you're creating this this environment no go to them but no you no you're scared of them so I just find it to be interesting right he'd lo- he'd lose the fight I think he still has guilt now um someone said that um they heard that he apologized to all the women he hurt in the past he did do a blanket apology and it was after straight out of compton it was just like oh yeah you know i've grown that's cool but did he name names no and once again if i got my ass beat i want you to say 
Kevin Dwayne Nelson, born March 9th, 1986. I dated you from this year to this year. We had this many kids. I beat your ass on this night, 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 and this night. I am so sorry for what I did. I was completely wrong in front of all these people. Do you forgive me? That's what I would want. You ain't gonna give my ass old blanket ass apology that you gave to 30 other bitches because you know you beat all their ass too. No, I need you to be very specific. Very specific for me to move on. I.e., I'd have a movie too. So go, Miss Chalet. I'll be watching the movie. And um, that's that. But I just think it's weird. Like, just like let her tell her story. If I mean you've moved on, but she hasn't. And it's a part of her pain. Let her tell her story. Let it, you know, you'll get through it like you got got through everything else. It is what it is. We we know about your past, but you just didn't do a good job at mentioning it yourself. And so now someone else has to tell their side of the story. And I don't think anything's wrong with that. Let her tell her side of the story. And that's that. But don't go assume it's Sony. It just, just let it be. Let it be. Um, and, and and final um, thoughts on uh, pop culture. Solange is number one this week. Like I'm so happy about that. Like so now her and her sister both have number one albums this year, which is super awesome. The album is beautiful. I want more visuals. I've been playing it out. Like I've been playing it on repeat. It's her first number one, and it's not like R and B charts. It's literally Billboard 200, and it's, that's so dope like I'm very happy for her because it's an amazing album I can't drive that home enough it's been on repeat I have absolutely positively loved it so if you haven't heard a see at the table go listen to it it's number one now so go ahead and hop on a bandwagon go ahead and just do that it's it's really really good so that's all that so um so I, I'm gonna have a uh one of those vulnerable moments that you guys love so much because I like keeping it real because I feel like we help other people get through their stuff by revealing our own you know and and getting through things so work and life in general has really been trying I won't say difficult because I've been making do but it has been really working on you know my energy and really kind of making me feel overwhelmed. Like I've had a lot on my plate lately and it can take a lot out of you. So on a Friday and Monday of this last week, I took some days off cause I needed to one catch up on my personal brand and get some editing done and stuff like that. But then I also needed time to kind of decompress and really, you know, get back to me and figure out some things. Um, because work, my, my regular nine to five, I was working 10 and 12 hours every day and it was just really taking a lot out of me. So I had to pull back and it did me well. I had a great weekend. I got to relax. I got to work. I, um, I was in the uh, gay pride parade, which was fun. And I got to just be, and I had this epiphany while I was half asleep, because that's, that's when it happens, like, I get, like, my best thoughts, like, right before I fall asleep, or right when I wake up, like, when you're in that kind of, um, that, uh, that place, um, someone just asked me in Periscope, can I sustain a living with just my photography, as of now, no, but I am working on it, and that's because I have not pushed it as a full-time living, but it works great as a part-time, so I am working on it, um, that is a part of my my plan, but um, I had to get to a place where um, I believed in myself and pushed it. Thanks to Sweet Fest Con, that was very inspiring, Sid. Um, but I am I am getting there. Um, so I had this thought where it was like it, it just said, Kevin, you need to free yourself from this energy, just because things are happening outside of you you don't have to let them get inside of you like don't allow like you know the water to rock the boat because you know you're good and it was it was certainly a moment for me because it it just clicked I was like you know what yes things aren't ideal but they're not terrible and just because I can't control certain situations I can I can focus on things I can control but I also need to protect my energy and in that moment there was like this sense of peace. I literally was like, I'm good. I got the rest I needed. All of a sudden, I felt 
fully rested. All that moment, I was ready to conquer the week again. I was ready to jump back in. I needed that thought of freedom. And it started hitting other places, not just work. It started hitting my dating life. Um, I get frustrated with dating, like a lot of people, because people are full of shit. And that can drive you crazy sometimes. So I freed myself from that. I'm like, you know what? I'm, don't worry about that. That'll work itself out. Friendships, if things aren't right, that'll work itself out. Photography, don't worry about that. That'll work itself out. Just keep going. Just keep moving. You can just just work on your peace. Just keep everything flowing. And that's what I've been been doing and then like I think about like politics that shit is crazy right now like the amount of like the just the amount of craziness in politics right now the amount of racism all this in your face stuff I just said I want to be free of all of it I want to remove myself from all of it because I can only do what I can do for me but I can't allow it to affect my energy and I was letting it affect my energy and I was like pull it back in and so right now I'm in the space of just freedom I will not be pressured by these things that I can't control period um, someone in Periscope said meditation is great for that I agree I'm a big fan of meditation meditation gets my mind together it really does it's very important especially in the morning before you start the day um i'm also big on affirmations um i love to i love post-it notes with affirmation on it i am this i will this i am this and just plaster it very being mary jane style everywhere very big on affirmations it's important you have to keep yourself encouraged because the pressures of the pressures of the world will literally get you down that is definitely a lyric to somebody's song but yes, it will definitely get you down. So it's important, but I started realizing that I need to just free myself from it. I'm not, I don't want to be pressured by the, the am I good enoughs of life, you know, because at work you feel like, you know, I should be making more money. Like, do they, why do they not value me like I value myself? I should be with somebody. Why am I, why am I not being valued? You should be talking to me. You should, leave it alone. Value yourself. Enjoy, enjoy your own company. You know, put value in the things that you do, focus on your passions. But just the whole idea of just being free just hit me over the weekend. And it literally made today a blast. Like, so I went back to work today and it wasn't bad at all. Like, it was still busy, but I was in control all of a sudden. And I wasn't stressed out in the end. And it just gave me a different viewpoint. And it just, it was awesome. And, like the like like you said someone said in the periscope dating could be its own podcast yes it can i can't even touch that with a six foot pole right now because i just can't it's too much it's too much so all i'm saying is no matter what you're going through no matter what is hitting you if things can be hitting you from all sides you don't have to allow that to affect your energy just breathe do what makes you happy Focus on self-love, self-awareness, meditate, you do affirmations, and just chill out. And don't let the crazy water rock your boat. Like, you'll be good. Like, And that's ultimately where I've been at. Because a week ago or more, I was starting to feel like I was getting depressed. And that's not really a characteristic of mine. You know, I usually have a sunny disposition. And for once, I had to realize, like, no, I'm not happy right now. I'm not, I'm not 100%. I'm not okay. And I wasn't going to hide behind it. I, I had to talk to someone about it. I talked to my best friends. You know, I, you know I, put, I put things up, like, you know, like, life is really trying to take my smile away. But I was able to turn it around, and I'm glad about that. And so, um, I, I'm, yeah. So, yeah, all I have to say is you don't have to allow what's going on around you to make you lose your peace. Try to keep it going and just and just remain positive or as positive as you can be. Talk to people, get through it, write, journal, do what you have to do. Take some days off. Do not allow anyone to overwork you because the truth of the matter is if you get overworked and pass out and die, they'll replace you within two weeks. That's all it takes. So, 
why give your all to something, especially if it's not your own passion? And that's where I'm at right now. So it's just freedom, freeing myself, being in a happy place, and just living. And that, my friends, was all I got. Um, This was nice. I always have a good time talking to you guys. Um, This is great. So those of you listening to the podcast, thank you so much for listening and subscribing and rating and commenting. Remember, you can join the conversation on Tuesday nights at 730 on Periscope and Facebook Live. Um, You can find me at, at The World of Kevin. Thank you so much for listening. This is amazing. Uh, Have a great week, and I will talk to you all next week. Peace out.